So first of all, uh, in case there are any uh, skeptics in the audience, uh, climate change is real, it is dangerous, and um, what the scientists tell us, uh, it will be catastrophic. So um, the main point here above is that um, what the scientists, and this is not just the scientists, all the governments of the world, about 192 countries that are members of the UN, um, who've signed the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, they have all agreed on the advice of scientists that uh, we have to restrict global warming to two degrees. Anything more and um, what a phenomenon called runaway climate change will happen. And uh, scientists really can't say for sure exactly what that would mean, but they all agree that it would be disastrous. So, you know, we have maybe the sudden collapse of the Greenland ice sheet. Um, the, the currents, um, North Atlantic currents might suddenly drastically, you know, be badly affected. They can't say for sure. So the world has decided let's limit it to two degrees. Uh, and of course, uh, what is causing global warming or climate change? Um, carbon emissions mostly, but of course other greenhouse gas emissions like methane, nitrous oxide, um, mainly from the burning of oil, coal, and gas. So our addiction to fossil fuels, although it's transformed our societies, the way we live, the way we, I mean, we drive to work, we uh, fly in an airplane, mm, any chance we get. Um, of course, a lot of luxuries and our lives have become much easier, but we've, we've paid a price since um, the advent of fossil fuels. So just, um, just some scientific information here. Um, there's, um, when we talk about two degrees warming, what we need to keep in mind that we're already reached 0 0.8 degrees warming. And this is since the Industrial Revolution. So we only have another one degree to go, so that's not all that much. And that's why scientists keep talking about the window is closing, the window is closing, meaning that if you want to do something about this uh, problem, you have to do it soon before it becomes too late in a way because like when no matter what you do it'll be too late to bring it below two degrees so um because a lot of this carbon dioxide is being absorbed by the oceans and the oceans have become warmer in recent years and there's other um, um, issues as well like acidification and and of course the effect on fish uh, fisheries and um, anyway like i said there's so many different aspects so I'll just get on with my presentation. Uh, what, what is important is to see the correlation between temperature and uh, carbon dioxide emissions. So they're both going up. Um, so what is the global challenge to limit warming to two degrees? Um, right now we have, because there has been no decision taken at the international level, a concrete decision, you, you have the Kyoto Protocol, but it's almost over now and there's no decision to renew it. Uh, so we have what we call uh, the business as usual scenario. And if it continues at the rate it's continuing, then we're talking about uh, greenhouse gas levels t touching 550 parts per million by 2050. So we're talking about a temperature increase of three to five degrees. And like I said earlier, we have to restrict it to two. So um, this will be deadly for the world. Um, we need to cap our emissions. We're already at 400 and there seems to be no, I mean, with India developing, Brazil developing, South Africa developing, China developing so fast, uh, Vietnam, other countries in the region developing so fast that there doesn't really seem to be much hope of controlling this right now. Um, so this is what the scientists are saying, that we're talk we have to cut our emissions drastically. But of course, um, as I mentioned earlier, for quite a number of reasons, we are delaying action. So, um, because no country wants to, uh, you know, take the lead right. I mean, no major country wants to take the lead right now. But there is hope that maybe in Paris next year, uh, I know I met the Greenpeace uh, head. Uh, his name is Kumi Nadu, and he was part of the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. So he was saying that you know Greenpeace has decided to go to the people and ask them to put pressure on their governments. So that is their plan of action for this year, that to start a global movement in which they will try and you know uh, make school children, college students, citizens to say, look, this is your future and your children's future and your grandchildren's future, which is at stake. And you really need to start putting pressure on your political leaders, on your governments to really come to some sort of a decision in Paris and not delay it. 
So I don't want to end my presentation on a negative note. So uh, what are the solutions? Uh, what, are, what are the scientists and the experts saying? And um, so, yes, they're talking about renewable energy, basically moving away from the fossil fuel era and uh, reducing our dependence on um, oil, gas, coal. So solar, wind, hydro, uh, conservation of natural resources, protection of forests, because forests act as carbon sinks, mm, efficiency in our transportation sector, uh, greener buildings. Uh, and I think a lot of countries in the West are now doing this. Um, I th the US has a great, uh, has, has had a push for greener buildings. And um, so a lot of people are hopeful that these are the optimists that, you know, with the right technology and funding that we can do it, we can still transform our world. And then there are the pessimists who say it's too late already. <laughs> and uh, amongst them um, is, I think, uh, surprisingly, uh, James Hansen, who, is the la who was the head of NASA. And he just resigned and retired from NASA. And, um, you know, he's... And it, he says it's already too late, really, and we should be preparing for a very dark world, um, you know, in which uh, there are going to be like riots and m hunger and lots of climate refugees, and it's really going to be survival of the fittest. So, so it, you you can choose which way you want to. You want to be an optimist or you want to be a pessimist. But both scenarios are valid. But yes, it's not going to be business as usual for sure. Things are not going to go on the way we are. Um, things are going to change very differently. So there are two approaches to how you deal with climate change. One is mitigation. And these are technical terms you'll hear of, mitigation and adaptation. So what is mitigation? It is, uh, which is mostly what the Western world is trying to do. Um, use fossil fuels more efficiently. Therefore, you have better cars, uh, like what they call uh, smart cars. Uh, smart homes, smart buildings. Uh, so you try and use fossil fuels more efficiently. You try and introduce renewable energy. Germany is a leader in um, solar energy. Wind, India is also becoming a regional leader in wind energy. Uh, you improve insulation of old buildings, which is the US is trying to do. And you protect and expand forests um, everywhere. And there is a mechanism called RED, um, which is, again, a technical term that I won't go into, but the UN is now going to give money to countries to protect their forests. Uh, unfortunately, Pakistan's tree cover is only 2.2%, although the government says it's 5.02%. But anyway, it's abysmally lo low. I mean, 2% is nothing, you know. So, um, well, we do, uh, we are hoping to get some money from this mechanism called RED. So maybe there's a chance we can save some of the, our remaining forests. Then there's uh, adaptation to climate change. That's the other approach, which is what most developing countries are doing, uh, which is, you know, amongst them are things like rainwater harvesting, planting trees in catchment areas, better agricultural practices, preparing for disasters, spreading awareness and strengthening institutions, improving management of protected areas, saving important species. So I think in um, South Asia, water management is the most important. Like either we have too much water, like in floods, or we have too little water, which is in droughts. Um, so here are some of the suggestions by the IPCC, you know, reservoirs and dikes, expand, expand the floodplain areas, early warning systems. So this is slightly technical, but these are just some of the suggestions. So um, yes, the Secretary General of the UN says that um, Yes, it, it is a big threat, but it is also an opportunity for the world to come together. And um, that's why the UN holds these conferences each year. And they still hope that, you know, the world will come to its senses, the political leaders, and we will sort of come up with a treaty that will limit carbon emissions and we can still try and save um, our modern lifestyles the way we know them. Because the, the, the Earth will continue. It's just our civilization that is at stake. So. Uh, if there is a concrete decision made, mm -hmm. uh, what are the chances that it would, um, whatever decision they come to, would be effective enough that mm -hmm. we'd be um, halting or controlling the mm -hmm. climate change? How effective would it be? Because, uh, as you said, by 2050, mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, it's expected to rise up to 3 to 5%. Mm.
you can't really say for sure what will happen because negotiations are very tricky usually the, the two weeks of negotiations and what happens is for two weeks it's just um nothing it seems like nothing is happening people are walking out people are upset with each countries are upset with each other there's backroom dealings is and then the two weeks pass and then suddenly on the last last they have an extra day they'll suddenly come to a decision and sometimes well in copenhagen it wasn't a very good decision so you can't say for sure uh like i said some people are very pessimistic and they think that they're just going to buy themselves even more a few more years and then some people say well you know if there's another katrina that hits new york city then maybe the us will you know suddenly come to its senses because new york is of course i mean not not uh, was it katrina or sandy that hit new york both no Sa- sandy i think yeah so um that some say it's all the us's fault it's the us that's blocking climate legislation um international climate legislation so i don't know obama is on his way out now i mean he's not going to run for another term uh, and apparently he's told his close circle of aides that he wants to leave a legacy and climate change is something healthcare was one and that's debatable but uh, climate change is another legacy that he wants to leave behind so who knows maybe he will come with something that um that will be sort of that will you know sweeten the chinese and then the chinese and the indians might soften up and then so uh pakistan is really um not a big player in all this uh, in fact in the negotiations our position is just to go with china uh so we do whatever china says as because they are our good friends we don't really have our own position although we are the one of the most vulnerable countries and we should actually be with the small island states uh because they're the they're also you know in danger well they're in danger of being wiped out because of sea level rise but we should be with more sort of uh least developed countries or although we're not a least developed country but still our position should be a little bit more extreme but we play it safe we just go with china